Hey out there, this is Friday, December 15th, 2017, and it's uh, about uh, four minutes before 11 o'clock in the morning here in Northern California, and uh, today I want to talk about a lot of things, uh, recent current events, um, some thoughts from this past week or two, talking points. But I don't want to pontificate for a long time. I'm still a little under the weather. Still got a thing going on with my ear. Never did go to the doctor, but slowly it's uh, it's improving. It's one of those uh, aspects of being human that nobody likes, you know, getting sick, I guess. Uh, and uh, so not much we can do about being human, is there? Uh, anyhow... Um, I kind of wanted the theme today to be just the uh, the contending in this unreality, this monumental charade uh, that's been foisted upon all humanity that we call a civilization. The pseudo nature of our reality, the highly subjective nature of all the terminology and how it's designed to divide us and how the strings are being pulled by these grand puppeteers that hide in the shadows, essentially, that they're content to not have fame except within their tight knit, close little sinister clandestine circles occult circles often and just to be the rulers of humanity they they really like just ruling over the affairs of men and being these big shots that uh, are in the this power drunken frenzy with each other colluding and and uh, just they're they're an insidious group of diabolical freaks as far as I'm concerned by their fruits, of course, and and the job that the righteous have to do is to expose these people as, as much as possible whenever you can, because this is what they don't like. Um, we should do it very tactfully and always tap into the spirit of truth, which is the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit and all that, the comforter, the encourager, the counselor, the great counselor, all these things we all have equal access to. So when it comes to making up our opinion about these things we always need in our attitude our spirit in, in thinking about these evil people that are ruling over us that are really sapping our joy they're sapping our happiness they're sapping our freedom and we're so inculcated by uh, the training that has been uh, shoved down our throats fostered from birth through this cost of living that innocuously call the cost of living. Well, we all understand that you got to pay the, this tax on your mere existence. But, you know, that in and of itself is wrong, and we need to really understand just how profoundly we're manipulated and have been from birth. And I'd hate to go through life, I'd hate anybody to go through life without just stepping back and looking at that one indisputable, irrefutable fact that... Uh, this is a tough pill to swallow when you see the light and you're traumatized to a large degree by the nonsensical, insane madness that we are all forced to have to contend with. And the caliber of the people doing it to us, they think they're so smart, uh, but they're just... Uh, they're really not. I mean, if they were smart people, they'd be nice people, okay, they, for one thing. They'd be compassionate. They'd be merciful. They'd, they'd value their conscience. They'd see it as relevant, pertinent to have integrity and honor, and to value their soul, and to value their relationship with their owner, you see. These are people that don't recognize that. They don't recognize. They don't care. That's, that's, uh, to no concern of theirs about this idea that there is a God that created them and that 
that in all properness they should honor that God. If they'd like to exist, and apparently these people just love their lives in this world. They, you know, these these are people that are infinitely wealthy. I mean, forget the billionaires, the multi-billionaires. That's a deflection. That's who the me mainstream media is told, instructed. You point the finger at them as the richest people in the world, but if you're behind the strings, you're really the grand puppeteers that are involved in the literal uh, manufacture of money. Money, the most powerful substance on earth known to man, right? At least we think. Of course, that's putting God aside and, and honoring God, you know, and saying, no, no, we honor the money. We honor the God of this world, which are two peas in a pod. They're one and the same because the God of this world would have no power if it wasn't for the money. So it's just very important to understand all the different ways we're being divided and confused and therefore disempowered because if you're confused you're effectively ignorant you just don't get it you know you just don't see the big picture through the eyes of the one that's most important that is our owner our creator god almighty so when you you know you were able to see through his eyes he doesn't hide things from us he wants us to see through his eyes he wants us to have the same perspective and perception as he does about matters and have the right belief systems and philosophies and credos uh, and all this sort of thing. Uh, right opinions, right, about stuff. Uh, you know, whether it's one specific issue, you know, you take capital punishment or a woman's right to choose an abortion or uh, economic policy. But <coughs> all of it has been muddied and bloodied and it's by intention. You see, uh, these people don't want the general public to be empowered with the knowledge, and we are all equally powerful because we're God's children, and we can all tap into that power anytime we choose to and realize that you have as much power as the next guy. It doesn't matter that he's got an infinite amount of money or not. In the eyes of God, you are an equal. We are all equals we're, because we're equally beloved. We're equally respected uh, by our owner, by God Almighty. You know, this ear thing is really annoying, so you're probably going to see me trying to blow through my nose, trying to clear that ear. Oh, boy, but that is annoying. It's been going on for a couple of weeks now almost. <sighs> Anyhow, um, I'm trying to stay on uh, track here with this uh, subjective nature of um, our so-called reality and all the terminology that's just designed to divide us and to keep us confused, to keep us ignorant, to keep us disempowered. And I would like everybody, uh, I have a duty, uh, it's not just, uh, I feel compelled uh, that, I, that I do what I do in making these videos, but I feel like I have an obligation to uh, future generations I want to be on the record. So there's a lot of reasons why I do these videos. But if I was hearing the stuff that I'm saying, spoken about on like the Alex Jones show, he's got a very high platform, a huge platform from which to speak. And his guests have that platform to share with the general public. I don't have that, but I really don't need it. You know, a guy like me, I mean, I'm really just a biblically based kind of guy. All the stuff that I really feel is relevant, important, pertinent for everybody it comes from scripture it's just maybe my own slant twist translation interpretation but in if i veer or deviate in any way from what is already written then always go to the written word always i would always tell everybody go right to your bible yourself and you know you can ad lib it yourself um, we all paraphrase everything when we quote. Nobody ever, very rarely do we quote verbatim and everything gets mixed. If you're quoting some historical figure, it's, you know, certain words can be changed. And, but that's okay as long as the spirit of what is trying to be said is conveyed. And it's, again, it's not the letter of the law or the spoken word that's so important because this can be very harmful. It's more the spirit that we're trying to get across. We're trying to embody the spirit of the written word and of a quote, for example. But, um, you know, we as human beings are very, very special, very intricate, uh, very, um, very compli 
complicated, very complex creatures. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about what kind of animal that I think I am, not what animal I would like to be like. Like I've said, I'd like to be just a puppy dog among men. But I really don't know exactly what I come across as to other people. But sometimes I feel like I can be an a-hole, an arrogant SOB, and I don't like it. I don't want to be that guy. And so the older I get, the better I think I get at catching myself and not falling into that trap because I feel a deep need to be exactly who I want to be and not be somebody that's just having his strings pulled so that I'm always ranting against the evildoers. Expose them, yes, that's the... That's the most powerful thing any of us can do, the righteous, I mean, the righteous among us that really hunger and thirst for righteousness, as Jesus said, you know, in the Beatitudes, it's called, with those sayings, he says, a lot of things that are very prudent and wise instruction, because that's what it is, it comes down to instruction, to edify us properly. Uh, we need to be instructed properly. We need to be able to go into the clear, clean water of truth that God wants us to be in, not in these muddied and bloodied waters. These deliberately, intentionally um, muddied and bloodied waters of confusion, what's called the Babylon effect, I think. You know, that, that nobody knows up from down, barely. I mean, you don't barely know your right hand from your left hand. and uh, It's just madness upon madness in this world and it's it's no wonder that we all are a little off you know we really have a difficult time and uh there as as a result uh, sin is very pervasive we all look for forms of escapism the good and decent righteous people do because we are rebelling against the evil in this world we're it's a way of exercising some modicum of control over our reality so we all engage in stuff that really we don't want to and it's so it's it's kind of a schizophrenic thing that's what sin is it's a sense of we're falling into temptation we're sinning we are separating ourselves from god and it's a vapid feeling that we uh derive from it so it's not a good thing and we know in our right minds and in all honesty we have to admit confess this truth at least and say, no, this is not ideal. I don't know why I do this thing, but I do it anyhow. Kind of like the Apostle Paul, the guy that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament Bible. He called himself the chief sinner. But great men through the ages, and women too, men are women, women are men. I mean, we're all one and the same. We're the family of man. Have had this issue that these great people struggle, often in vain, with the, uh, the rulers of the this world that's like Jesus said this the rulers of darkness of this world these are the dark rulers these are evil people these are the occultists these are the Luciferians these are Satanists some of them are overt openly admit they are and others of them just hide behind uh, they're just you have to look at their fruits to under, to know that that yeah they're evil because they love their lives in this world so much they love the things of this world. They love the money. They love the power. They love the control. They just love these temporal, these temporary things of the world that we none of us should be overly invested in because just like our bodies, we have to surrender everything. So it doesn't make any good sense to be overly invested in these temporary things of this world. It's like being overly invested in a dream that you know you're going to have to wake up from. But yet we're all steeped, we're all marinated in this madness. So it's not like any of us can escape fully. We, at least we can't do it on our own. We have to try to bring as many people with us as we can. And that's what I do. I, I make these videos because in the hopes, look, I reach one person, he reaches two people, and then those two reach four, and that's how, it, like, leaven in the dough, right? It spreads. But all I want to spread is anything good coming out of my mouth because... Uh, there's just been too much crap over my span of my life. Plenty of crap has come out of my mouth. And, um, and I'm sorry because I, I never meant it to. I never meant to offend anybody. Uh, I'm, you know, sure we need to correct people. But, you know, while I don't mind being called a righteous dude, I really resent the implications of being called a self-righteous dude. And so what do I do about that? I just have to not act like a self-righteous dude as best as I possibly can, be genuine and sincere 
and caring because if you're like if you're like that if you're respectful to other people that's a loving trait that is loving people is when you care about people you see them as your equal and we're all free to do that to me that's the most freeing experience of my life is when i tap into that 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 to me is coming into that clear clean water where you can see for miles and miles you can see for eternity through god's eyes and that's freedom to me that's the only freedom i get is when i'm over there but it's a big departure from where i am when i'm stuck like everybody else in this crap hole this cesspool that is peddled to us and sold as reality when it's nonsensical it's just yeah. when i hear people talk and they they don't define terms i mean i hear liberal and these leftists and all this you know these bandied bandied about on the alex jones channel and his reporters and you know but i don't think they understand it. they won't define it they won't talk about it and so you know words like freedom this is a huge word we need to discuss it how do you mean that please you know qualify that quantify that expand